今天可能好开始的时候。I'm Lily. I'm Corinne. Here we are in Danshui, at the end of Taipei MRT's Red Line, which is just northwest of Taipei City. The district of Danshui lies at the mouth of Danshui River, which is a freshwater river, right here where it runs out to meet the Taiwan Strait. Because of its convenient location and geography. It was settled in 1628 by Imperial Spain as one of its two trading posts here in northern Taiwan, along with Jilong Port. Today, as we explore the physical structures left over by early Western colonialism in Taiwan, we'll also be thinking about the general Western influence on Taiwan. When Spanish traders first set up here in 1628, they built a fort. Fort San Domingo, atop a hill overlooking the shore of the river. But the structure we see here today is actually not Spanish. See, while the Spanish set up two ports in the north of Taiwan, the Dutch had already begun trading in the south of Taiwan earlier in the 1620s. In 1642, the Dutch took the Jilong port, and Spanish traders, knowing their time in Taiwan was over, burned down their Fort San Domingo before fleeing Danzui. What we see here is what's called today Hong Mao Cheng, literally translating to the Red Haired Fort, built by the Dutch in 1644 on the original Spanish site of Fort San Domingo. Well, it's called Red Hair Fort because the Dutch were notorious for their red hair. After Koxinga ousted the Dutch in the year 1662, this place fell into disuse until the late Qing Dynasty when Great Britain rented the space for its consulatory office in 1867. They even put in four cells for local British prisoners. And where we are right now is actually the prisoners' exercise yard. Of the nine national powers that have inhabited this site, five of them have been Western. Some used it as a military fort, others as an administrative building. But the Western presence in Taiwan extends beyond military and official diplomatic business. Next door, in the residence of the British consulate, European visitors could experience Formosan tea at a British tea time. It's very Downton Abbey. Yeah. Herbert A. Giles worked on his famous Chinese English dictionary here for three years, while other Westerners came to trade or to espouse their religious views. One of the most famous examples of later Western influences is Canadian missionary and dentist George Leslie Mackay, who came to Danshui in the year 1872 to set up the first Presbyterian church, as well as the first Western-style hospital and university here in northern Taiwan. So I couldn't help but notice that Mackay is remembered in a very positive way here, which is not always true of Western influencers. Mm -hmm, absolutely. In fact, about a month ago, I met this 90-year-old man who remember getting his teeth pulled the Western way, and he was so relieved that he didn't have to get his teeth pulled like um, the older people in his family, the traditional way. <laughs> but Western influence is not always perceived as such a great thing. What makes Mackay so special here? Even the colonists, they aren't really perceived as being very negative here in Taiwan either. I guess that's probably for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was a really long time ago. And second, at the time, most of the current Taiwanese population, Han Chinese people, hadn't even, their ancestors hadn't even come to Taiwan yet. So they mm. never really overlapped with the Dutch. Yeah, that said. Yeah, that said. Yeah, so this is a very important point for understanding Taiwanese history. The main uh, colonizing powers in Taiwan have not been Western powers. During the Qing Dynasty and a bit before, during Koxinga's time, Han Chinese people colonized Taiwan. Han Chinese people are not 
indigenous to Taiwan. Yeah, that said, uh, we can't really speak to the indigenous people's perspective on the Dutch time here. The second thing that I think also makes McKay more special is even among non-colonizing Western influences, um, a lot of times Western culture is forced on another place. Whereas with him, it's a very reciprocal exchange in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, he married a Taiwanese woman with whom he had five children and lived out the rest of his life here in Danshui. I think it's pretty cool. Didn't he speak Taiwanese? He, he definitely spoke the language. Mm. So on a personal level, he was pretty legit. But also on a broader level, I think in Taiwan, there hasn't been a Western power that's forced Taiwan to um, relinquish. to relinquish their the heritage. own heritage. Okay, so again, when we talk about Taiwanese culture and the Taiwanese population now, um, we're really talking about an imported Han Chinese culture. Forced Taiwan to um, relinquish. To relinquish their the heritage. own heritage. So even now, people can benefit from Western ideas in education and Eastern ideas in education. And they can benefit from traditional Eastern medicine and traditional Western medicine. So it's it's almost the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. With that in mind, do you want to go get something to eat? Zhong shi xi shi. Okay. I'll right, see well, you next time. Bye, guys.